I'll have another tongue. Didn't know you'd be up so late. Oh, go to bed and miss all this romantic moonlight? How was your evening, Tom? Profitable? Did she have a good time? Looks like you had a better one. There was no she. You did a good job wiping off the lipstick. Your fidelity is amazing to her. Good night, Helen. We'll talk in the morning. Let's talk tonight. What's your excuse this time? Were you at a board meeting or having a conference at the club? Don't push me, Helen. Of course, you were sitting up with a sick friend. That should be your alibi, Tom, because all your friends are sick. Shut up! Is that all you have to say? No. I hope you're sober enough to understand. I want out of this. I want a divorce. <laughs> that would be very cozy. But what about me? <laughs> I'm sure you'll manage. Who is she? A beautiful young girl that needs a father image? Who that's is not, she? That's no concern of yours. No. Well, it's my money that's taking her out, and I want to know what you're getting for it. I could kill you for that. Steady beat on the fattest flounder you ever saw in your life. Hey, now don't point that thing at me again. And I squeeze the trigger. Mike swims in front of me. <laughs> Goodbye, fat flounder. And hello, thin detective. <laughs> yeah, but not thin enough. He bagged me, didn't he? Lucky thing it ricocheted off a rock or I might not even be here. Well, think of the bright side, Mike. That underwater dart might have nipped a more serious target. <laughs> He's right, Mike. It, uh... It's been a lot worse. Hi, Dr. Keeling. You know everybody, huh? Hi, Doc. Sure. My friends, they've come to bury Caesar. But believe me, the next time that brother of yours invites me to go skin diving... You might remember that you're past the age of competing with college boys. Why, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I'm afraid my days are numbered. Listen, I'd like to say this intern is grateful. Why, why do you realize I might have become an old man without having a uh, similar case on my records? <laughs> Headline. Famous detective meets sad end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, my friends, if you'll all excuse me, I think I'd better get back to uh, a little of my reading. It was left here by the former occupant. <laughs> See you later, mother. <laughs> well, I know all that, Mark. But there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's the situation. It's the only way. All right. All right, I'll wait till you get back next week. But then I want action. Morning, George. Morning, Tom. Hey, what's all that about? Good old Mark. Legal problems? Yeah. Oh, come on, come on, tell me. I'm divorcing Helen. Are you serious? You just heard me talking to my attorney. Isn't that serious enough? I just can't believe it. What happened to you? A year ago, you would have been delighted to hear the news. Oh, come on, Tom. There's never been anything between Helen and me, and you know it. Do I? Frankly, it doesn't matter. Well, listen to me. Doesn't 15 years of friendship give me the right to ask you to consider this carefully? Go on. Use your head. You've been married for years. Helen still loves you. Do you want to throw all this away? Let's face it, for a girl who's half your age. Let's leave Randy out of this. 
You think Helen's going to be satisfied by you merely tossing some money at her? Especially since it's her money that helped you get started? Helped us get started. I'm sorry, George. This is something I've got to do. How's business? Not bad. Not bad. Have a seat. How's your luck been running? Oh, I haven't been playing lately, but I imagine you're going to do all right anyway. <laughs> as long as there are true lovers of the sport of kings, I make book. That makes the people happy. And that makes me happy. Mm-hmm. And rich. Yeah, I do all right. I came down here to talk to you. Talk to me? Yeah. I'm in a lot of trouble, Crane. Oh. An investment broker that makes poor investments? How much is a lot of trouble? I'd say it comes to about $100,000 worth. You are in a lot of trouble. If my partner divorces his wife, I am. He wants me to be a court of domestic relations. You know something, Mickey? I don't think the man's books could stand in order. Look, Crane, this is no joke. I'm not laughing. You know, you've got a lot of gore coming here for loop. My little book tells me a very sad story. You're in pretty deep as it is. Don't you think I know that? That's what I'm talking about. If this divorce goes through, you're never going to get your money. I won't? In that case, I have a suggestion for you. You elect yourself a committee of one to keep those lovebirds together. That way you'll kill two birds with one stone. And you'll keep yourself together. Look, Crane, don't waste my time, Ames. Now listen, listen, will you? Listen, come on now. Why can't we make it tonight? Well, forget it. I'll call you later. Welcome, 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 Uncle George. How are oh, you, Frank? Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. You don't mind if I call you Uncle, do you? I've never had an uncle, you see, and everyone should. It's the thing to do. <laughs> well, I'm glad you arrived. I thought for a minute I was going to get stuck with a tab. Here's one for you to warm up with. Yeah, thank you. Now we've broken bread together. <laughs> Come on, Uncle George, let's get down to the dirty work afoot, huh? Why'd you say that? All of a sudden, out of the clear blue sky, you call me to meet you down here for a drink. Now, I can't remember any similar convivial rendezvous when I was your employee. But Frank, it's past. Of course, Uncle George. Everything that isn't of the present is of the past. It was not how I enjoy your company or your drinks, but, uh, Really, what's the purpose of this visit? I can throw a little money your way? Back to the ever-flowing ticker tape? Uh, no thanks, Uncle George. Work and I aren't compatible. <laughs> Haven't you got any pride? Now, if you're referring to the fact that my sister Randy insists on supporting me, I have no pride. But what you don't understand, Uncle George, is it makes her feel very good. How would you feel if she was to marry Tom Walker? <laughs> Well, marrying Walker is not a happy prospect for anyone, including my sister Randy. But she hasn't done it, has he? I can give you $5,000 in cash if you can keep her from seeing Tom. I'm interested. But why is it worth $5,000 to you? We're partners. I'm trying to do the best I can for him, as any friend would. Ooh. <laughs> Here's to friendship, Uncle George, and long may it be deserved. Look, Frank, you can talk to your sister. You can explain to her what a terrible mistake it'd be. 
Uncle George, since my sister reached the age of consent, she doesn't listen to the advice of a wayward brother. And I don't think $5,000 is going to make her start now. Well, you can try, can't you? Uncle George, I have a very interesting story to tell you. As a child, I had one prayer. I used to say that prayer every night. I never missed it. You want to know what it was? I prayed that someday I would be endowed with a very, very rich brother-in-law. So long, Uncle George. Everything is fine, just fine. Come on, tell me, what's bothering you? Then everything is bothering me, just everything. Well, that takes in quite a lot of territory. Does it? Well, that's what I meant for it to do. Frank says you're not going to marry me. Randy, your brother drinks a little too much. Besides, he's a liar. What are you, Tom? Me? I'm the man who loves you. My brother loves me. You're older, you're more successful, but you don't face up to things any more than he does. You're afraid and it makes you weak. No, I'm just trying to be realistic. Be realistic. All right. A few weeks ago, you said your wife was going to give you a divorce. Did she? Well, that's being realistic, isn't it? Did she or did you just make it up when it was convenient for you? Uh, a divorce just isn't that easy to work out. Did she or didn't she? Well, the truth is no. But she will, I'll see to that. I'm sure you will, just like you saw to this. I tell you I will, but I've, I've got to be careful. <laughs> Helen will try to take every cent I have. Well, let her try. Tom, what are you afraid of losing, the money or me? I want both. And we can have both, Randy, if you'll just give me a little time. Well, maybe we don't have that much time. No. Maybe I'm tired of waiting, Tom. Who am I, sweet Miss Hobbs, that's waiting around for somebody to marry me? Hasn't it ever occurred to you that someday when you walk through that door, I just won't be here? Don't say that. Don't even think it. I love you. Do you think it's been easy on me? What are we going to do? Hold on. Just a little while longer. We're the ones who count, Randy. Only us. Don't you think you better let your wife know that? I'll talk to her. Mrs. Walker. Come in. Can I fix you a drink? I think we can dispense with the pleasantries. I'd be glad to. My husband seems to think he's in love with you. Well, you shouldn't have made the trip just to tell me that. Men of Tom's age are sometimes given to very strange behavior. I like men Tom's age. I doubt that. I'm more inclined to think it's his money that has its appeal for your sort of girl. And what sort of a girl am I, Mrs. Walker? I've pretty well made up my mind about that. 
What I want to know now, Miss Hobbs, is your price. My price? Well, my price is something only Tom has to give. Marriage. Capital M. And what does the capital M stand for? Money? Do you realize I had 15 years invested in Tom? Invested? What is he, a holding company? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Walker, but you're wasting our time. You're not going to drag me through a scandal that's going to make me look like a fool. Well, that's up to you, isn't it? Sharon. Sharon, let me keep what I've got, the marriage, and you can keep all this and whatever else you see in him. What is that? Half a loaf is better than none? Well, not for me. Miss Hobbs, can't you leave me my life with him? That isn't a life, it's a sentence. I want to marry Tom, and if he'll have me, I will. Good night. Boy, is he pleasant. I see my old man come home like that. Hey, look, Doc. This was laying next to him. Probably snapped off his rest when he fell. I am a diabetic. Diabetic. What's that stuff? That's insulin. Will it help him? It'll save his life. All right, Charlie, let's get him in the stretch. sheet shows that you administered insulin on that last emergency call. Yes, sir. The man was a diabetic. What led you to believe that? Well, there, there was every indication of diabetic coma. And he, he was wearing a bracelet that spelled it out. We found no indication of diabetes, Bob, and no bracelet. Well, what was there, doctor? I saw it. Your diagnosis was wrong. Wrong? It wasn't diabetic coma? I'm afraid not. My guess would be that he had a weak heart and the insulin killed him. And who was the man? His name was Tom Walker. He was a prominent investment broker. Walker and Ames, huh? And he was in a coma. That's right. I felt there wasn't time. He might have died. So I gave him the insulin. Well, I guess there's only one thing to do. Take full responsibility and resign. Now, wait a minute. What will that accomplish? You say there were some other people around. Anyone else see the bracelet? I doubt it. Wait a minute, there was a kid there. Well, that's right, he saw it. He even read the inscription. Good. You know his name? No, just a red-haired kid with a face full of freckles, huh? 
about, about 12, I guess. Newsboy. Did you notice which newspaper? Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Don't worry about it. We'll find him. If it wasn't a diabetic coma, then why was Walker unconscious? Was he drunk? A couple of drinks, maybe, but no, nah, that wasn't it. I'm sure now he'd been given a dose of chlorohydrate. Chlorohydrate? A Mickey, huh? Yeah. Who called the ambulance? The call came from a place called the Crow's Nest. It's a bar close by where Walker collapsed. And that's where he might have come from? Possible. Bob, are you sure that Walker was wearing an identification bracelet? Right. I'd stake my life on it. Now you don't have to do that. A wrong diagnosis is one thing. Murder is another. I'm not so sure. Red light. Now take your hands off the wheel. And hello. Hello. Are you coming to see Mr. Shane? Well, that was my original intention, but I could be sidetracked very easily. Sorry, sir. Sidetracking isn't one of my duties. Are you a doctor? Well, in a way, in a way. Uh, let me put it like this. I specialize in eye, ear, nose, and throat. And you have a combination they forgot to tell us about in med school. Maybe you didn't study hard enough. Well, in that case, how's my patient doing? Much better than you are. Green light. <laughs> I wouldn't have liked her anyway. <laughs> this is a sick room? What gives? Occupational therapy. Work. Where's Lucy? She's out trying to find an unknown red-headed boy about 12 who has a face full of freckles and sells newspapers. The Walker death. I'm covering it. Sounds like a big story. Intern pulls fatal boner. Now, Tim, don't lean on Keeler, huh? You know me better than that, Mike. He's a doctor. He was just doing his job. A man died. That's the only thing we're sure of. Come on, give. They checked the body. There's no sign that Walker ever wore an ID bracelet. Both his wrists are evenly tanned. Doesn't that really put it on Keeler? Not if someone deliberately planted the bracelet for just that purpose. He'd have to be pretty drunk for someone to get away with that. Keeler said somebody helped him along with knockout drops. What's in it for you, Mike? Trying to help Keeler. He can wind up getting a bad deal. And if it turns out that he did botch it? Then he'll get what he deserves. Well, either way, I'll have a story. Where do I start? Thought you'd never ask. Now, there's a place called the Crow's Nest. Yeah, I know the spot. That's probably where they slipped in the Mickey. Hello, Doctor. Excuse me. <clears throat> It may not look that way, but this is still a hospital. Do you mind, Mr. Shane? Well, I sure look. What'd you say? I said lots of luck. I hope so. the message from outer space. Oh. Far and warmer. Ah, me, I'm a sun lover. Well, that figures. What do I wind up doing, tending bar? <laughs> well, you work here all the time? Sometimes I even sleep and eat. Oh, were you on duty yesterday? Yeah, I worked for a living. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm with the Miami Tribune, man. Huh? I wonder if you could help me. Any good in it for the bar? Well, they say all publicity is good. You recognize this man? Hold it up so I can see it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's the guy that dropped dead in front of the joint yesterday. Well, do you know him? Well, like a doctor knows his patients. He's one of those uptown big financiers that he comes in here with his partner. Oh, he's been in with a young girl a couple of times, a real doll. Did you uh, 
Did you serve him? Yesterday, I mean? No, sir. He staggered in there with a the package on, and I staggered him right out before he could light. Oh, did he say where he'd been? No. Well, he must have drove in from another bar, I guess. Drove? Yeah. Yeah, that's his car right across the street. His car's been parked there all night. You mean he drove in his condition? Oh, sorry. Thanks. It's parked all right. Some guys can do it, some guys can't. Well, why all the questions? Oh, we're just, uh, just tracking on a Mickey. Thanks. But don't get too red. You know, the boss might get the idea you're sampling the merchandise. <laughs> didn't get on Walker's boat, but it looks like that's where he may have started from. What makes you think so? An attendant at the Yacht Club parking lot said he saw Walker's car pull out about a half hour before he hit on the sidewalk. Anyone drive out with Walker? The attendant was positive there were two in the car, but he wasn't sure the other was a man or a woman. What now? How about going over to Walker's brokerage house? You might get something out of his partner Ames. Good idea. I'll do that tonight. I'll keep in touch. Dear Mr. John Doe, as a result of careful examination of your account, we regret to inform you that we sold you out this morning. <laughs> oh, you're not very funny, Frank. Cut it out. Oh, come now, dear sister. Your suit of mourning is wearing thin. And woe is but a tiny moment in a lifetime. Oh, stop it! Frank, if you had told me about the forged check before Tom died, I could have gotten it from him. Randy, you think he's going to leave it lying around? We're wasting my time, so I'm leaving. Da, 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 Will you please get up and help me? I'm doing this for you. That's altruism, Randy. Particularly since I know that the dear departed left you quite a handsome sum of money. Or wasn't I supposed to know that? No, because all you've ever known was how to get yourself into trouble. And then depend on me to get you out of it. Randy, I'm sorry. I... Baby, please help me. We have to find the check. You're gonna help me. You know anybody with an M.O. like this? Yeah, that's one of the older and less genteel tricks. I know a couple of boys. Well, here. name one. Mickey Kane. Crane's boy. If you're smart, you'll stay as far away from that kind of action as you can. Now, what's the story? I already told you, Will. What were you doing at the Ames Walker building at that time of night? When my boys found you, you were stretched out on the rose bushes like you came with a landscape. I was going to have a little chat with Walker's partner. You must figure he uh, keeps pretty late office hours. Aw, oh, come on, Tim. Homicide, Gentry. Yeah, Mike. What's with Tim? You tell me. As far as I'm concerned, he was out on some hocus-pocus on that Walker killing. You have anything to do with it? Well, he's after the story, Will. 
All right, have your fun. As far as I'm concerned, that intern was guilty of negligence, and that's all there was to it. Unless you've got something I haven't. No, except that I believe Keeler was telling the truth about the bracelet. If there ever was one. Well, I think there was, and we'll find it. Uh, let me talk to Tim. Yeah, sure. What's left of him? Yeah. Look, Dick's waiting for you outside headquarters. Look, Tim, I know I've put you in a rough spot, but... That's okay. I'm over 21. This story's turning out to be a Lulu. You sure you're all right? No, not yet, but I will be. Bye. And goodbye to you. You were lucky this time. Next time, it might be a sheet over your face at the morgue. I told you, Mr. Rourke, I don't know any Stuart Crane. And I'm sure my husband didn't know him either. I resent that, Mr. Rourke. I don't care what the gossip column has said. We were very happy together. There was no other woman in my husband's life, no Randy Hobbs or anyone else. What's the matter, Helen? Worried? It was the truth. Sure. That about Crane, was that the truth, too? You might as well know I went in to see Stuart Crane. And he's very unhappy with you, George. It seems that you owe him quite a bit of money, and he wants to know if I'll stand good for it. What have you got to do with it? Since Tom is gone, you and I are partners, George. And after seeing Stuart Crane, I want an immediate audit of the firm's books. Oh, so that's it, huh? Yes, that's it. Well, there's just one thing wrong with it, Helen. You and I aren't partners. Oh? Uh -huh. It was just last week that Tom and I took steps to make sure that the business would continue no matter what happened. What kind of steps? An insurance policy. In case of death, one partner becomes the business beneficiary of the other. How convenient. An insurance policy and then Tom dies. about it, Eddie. I don't know what you're talking about. You a cop? No. No badge. Come on now, what's the story? You tell me, mister. Eddie, you sell papers outside the crow's nest, don't you? You ought to know. That's where you found me. Well, then you must have been there that afternoon. Were you, Eddie? So I was there. That don't mean I stole anything. The doctor says there was a bracelet. Now, he told me you had it in your hand. Wouldn't just get up and walk away, would it? I tell you, I didn't swipe it. Are you sure? Are you telling the truth, Eddie? It isn't just the bracelet that's important. A man's whole career could be taken away from him. A good man, you wouldn't want that to happen, would you? I guess not. Well, where is it? At home. Put her there, Eddie. You're a 
good boy. But you go home with him and pick it up. I saw Tom wear this. As a matter of fact, I didn't know they had this kind of bracelet. Did you make me come down here for this? Oh, I didn't make you come down here, Mr. Ames. I, I just thought you'd like to cooperate. After all, you and Mr. Walker were business partners. Sure, I want to cooperate. But I think you ought to be asking that intern all the questions. We have. I understand you and Walker were very close friends, besides being business partners. That's right. We've known each other since college. And far back. What did you study at the university? Pre-med. When I moved into graduate work, I decided that being a doctor wasn't for me. It's interesting. You went through four years of pre-med, and yet you've never heard of a bracelet like this. What are you driving at, Shane? Well, it's time for my constitutional. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Ames, uh, how's your business been doing? Our business? Mm -hmm. Fine, excellent, couldn't be better. How will uh, Walker's death affect the firm? Well, Tom was certainly a very important part of the operation. But we'll have to get along the best we can without him. By we, you mean uh, yourself and Mrs. Walker? No. She won't be in the firm. But she would have had a claim in case of a divorce. Divorce? Just where do you get your so-called information, Jane? Tom and Helen got along very well. There was never any talk about divorce. Mm -hmm. What about uh, Randy Hobbs? Friends, that's all. What are you trying to do, dream up a May and December romance? Trying to get some answers, Mr. Ames. You're helping me. I don't see how I'm helping you when you keep twisting my answers. I expect to get a lot more answers pretty soon. What's that supposed to mean? A report on the investment transactions of Walker and Ames. A full report. What do you expect to prove by that? Planned and premeditated murder, Mr. Ames. Look, Shane, as you pointed out, I came here to cooperate in the investigation of my partner's death. But you seem to be interested in opinions that are completely opposite to the facts I give you. I've got no more time to waste. How about some coffee, Dick? Oh, no thanks, man. We just had lunch. Stuck Lucy for it, which makes for a very bright day. Why don't you try a little coffee with your sugar? No, I need the energy. I'm a growing boy. Mr. Shane, excuse me. A lovely, lovely nurse with a Mona Lisa smile bade me enter yonder portals without the formalities of doorbell ringing, knocking, etc., etc. Well, glad she did. And you're, uh... I'm Frank Hobbs. How do you do? Nick Dick Hamilton. How do you do, Mr. Arms? Hello. Mind if I share your sunshine? Well, why not? We've got uh, comes free by the gallon. Now, uh, Mike, I'm gonna I'm gonna take off. I'll see you later. Mr. Hobbs, it's been a pleasure. Oh, nice to meet you. Pull up a chair. Okay, thank you. I'm sure you're aware, Mr. Shane, that I am not just passing by. What's on your mind? My sister Randy. I understand that you're working on the Walker death, is that true? Is your sister involved? Now, what do you mean, involved? Now, look, Shane. It's as simple as this. I don't want my sister getting into any trouble because of this stuff. Walker's dead, right? Now, what earthly good would it do anyone to have her name smeared across every newspaper in town? Those rags love that kind of stuff, you know that. Well, may I? Oh, go ahead. Thank you. You see, Mr. Shane, my sister, Randy, is about the nicest thing that ever happened to me in my life. And I don't want her name dragged through the mud, that's all. I think you can prevent that. Something wrong with the coffee? Uh, no, I, uh, <clears throat> I just don't take sugar, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, thanks. I understand uh, you worked for Walker. Yeah, yeah, I did, up until four months ago. Is that how he uh, met your sister? No, rather it was the other way around. 
Walker gave me the job because of Randy. You see, he loved her. And in spite of their ages and other obstacles such as a wife, Randy loved him too. Now, it's not that I approved of that at first, but... Is that why you stopped working for Walker? No, no. Walker promised to get a divorce and marry Randy, you see, and break all of your average rules and your average storybook. He was going to marry your sister then? Oh, of course, without a doubt. See, Randy wanted him alive. So if they're even thinking of Randy as a suspect, they're barking up the wrong tree, wouldn't you say? As a matter of fact, why don't they ask George Ames a few pointed questions? Like what? Like offering me $5,000 to stop Walker's divorce. Why? There's another good question. And if I know Mr. Ames, and believe me, I know the redoubtable Mr. Ames is going to have a very smooth but lying answer for you. Well, I've certainly had my say today. Spiel my spiel. I thank you very much for your hospitality and for your coffee, Mr. Shane. Goodbye. myself. What's this doing here? Just one of my lighter hobbies, giving myself an anesthetic. Well, please don't tell me about your heavier hobbies. Under what category do you list throwing rock candy around the room? Hmm? Let me have that. Why rock candy? Who'd use it? Well, it might have fallen off one of the trays. We sometimes give it to diabetics. Diabetics? Tell me more. Maybe better ask one of the doctors. Randy Hobbs? Yes. I'm Tim Rourke. I'm investigating the death of Tom Walker. Investigating? I don't understand. Well, uh, there's a possibility it might have been murder. Oh. May I come in? Yes. Yes. I really don't think I can help you. I don't know anything. Well, the word is that you were going to marry Walker once you got a divorce. We had talked about it. It wasn't definite. It's our moment of truth, sis. Away with your blushing modesty. The nuptial rites were planned and prepared a neat package to be adorned with orange blossoms and uh, with no strings attached. Strings? None. Except perhaps the bonds of love. And what about this check made out to you for $1,000? Mr. Walker gave me many checks, my friend. I was his employee, remember? during one of my rare working cycles. Well, your salary checks were much smaller, not $1,000. Well, I know what you're speaking of, the loan. Now, that was an emergency. Randy was ill, right, sis? Yes, there was a loan, I'm sorry. Tom thought it best not to give me the money direct. Then why didn't you cash it? Oh, I did, and with great speed. The bank was most happy to make the exchange, money for check. I uh, talked to the bank manager. He didn't like the looks of the signature on the check. He called Walker. Well, there's your average bank, cautious. Walker told him to go ahead and cash it anyway, without putting it through. He wanted to use this forged check against you. Yeah, he would. So I forged it. He was beginning to be quite miserly with his allotments. May I get it? Why not? It's open house at the Hobbs Mansion. Mrs. Walker has a theory on the murder. And what is Mrs. Walker's theory? You wanted Tom's money. 
And when he told you the truth, that he loved me, you killed him. I had no reason to kill him. He was going through with the divorce. That's a lie. Is it a lie, Mrs. Walker? No. It's not a lie. But I had enough evidence on Tom to break him in court, to take every penny he had. That's why I wanted to see him alive just for that. Imaginative, my dear Mrs. Walker, but highly illogical. It makes sense to me. You dropped this, didn't you, Frank? And you know what it is. It's rock candy. That's funny. I never even liked lollipops. Hold out your arm. Why? This is your bracelet. And you might as well wear it. I think you'd better wear it. I did it for you, Randy. You're a liar. No. I knew he'd never marry you. I couldn't let him get away with that. Killing Walker was the first decent thing I ever did in my life. Frank, you did it because he had that forged check. Help me? I hope they hang you. I <laughs> say love you, Randy. Some people win, some people lose. Me, I guess I'm the king of the losers. <laughs> So after all that, I finally managed to get to sleep. And then the nurse comes in and wakes me up. Why? To make me take a sleeping pill. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what time it is? What's the difference? I have to get up early tomorrow morning and open the office. Ah, stay a while. Now look, Mike, you've got to do what the doctors told you to do. Take it easy for a couple of days. Oh, you bet. I mean it, Mike. Now, I know we've all been kidding you about your little accident, but, uh, you know, it could be pretty bad. I will. I'll, I'll take it easy. Well, then don't feel that you have to get up bright and early and come into the office, because if I need you, I will call. Oh, that'll be fine. You're going to do just what you want to do anyway, aren't you? Angel, I don't know what I'd do without you. You sure your watch is right? Good night, Michael. <laughs>